2018. Council Member Clark, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you very much. Roll call, please. Council Member Gillio? Here. Vice Mayor Solario Luna? Present. Mayor Velasquez? Here. Council Member Friend? Present. Council Member Clower? Here. City Manager Avera? Present. City Attorney Diaz? Present. Police Chief Westrick? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Verification of agenda posting. <coughs> The agenda for the City of Hollister City Council meeting of April 2nd, 2018 was posted on the bulletin board on March 29th, 2018 at 12.20 p.m. per government code, sec per government code section 54954.2. Thank you. City Attorney, is there anything you want to report out from closed session? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I have item one. I'll defer to the city clerk to report on item one as I was uh, conflicted out of that one given the city council's decision with regards to item one, public employment, city attorney contract. Okay. It was um, council took action on this item. It was unanimous consensus to offer the contract to Prentice, Long, and Epperson. However, they would like to keep current firm to finish some existing legal matters. Thank you. And so on item two, uh, this is conference with legal counsel existing litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9, City of Hollister uh, et al. versus PG&E et al. Uh, on this matter, the city council uh, directed uh, the attorney for the city of Hollister to execute a waiver by and through the city manager. Um, and authorize the city of Hollister to pursue mediation of the case which is set to, to uh, take place on May 1st. With regards to item three, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9. This is the 400 block referendum. No action was taken on this item. Those are all the items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. We're gonna move forward to proclamations. We have two tonight. Walk a mile in her shoes and National Crime Victims of Rights Week. Are they both here? We'll start with Walk a mile in her shoes. Erica Elliott. I don't know. This year looks like you got the witch or something. <laughs> I'm going to have to bring my high heels back out. <laughs> Whereas Walk a Mile in Her Shoes Day is intended to draw attention to our fact that rape, sexual assault, intimate partner abuse remain serious issues in our society. And now, therefore, I, Ignacio Velasquez, Mayor of the City of Hollister, to hereby proclaim April 28, 2018, as Walk a Mile in Her Shoes Day and encourage our community to join in and to participate in this event as a show of solidarity. Bring out your high hills, man. It's a lot of fun. I love doing it each year. Mine are prettier than those. So every nine seconds a woman is beaten or assaulted. Every 56 minutes, someone is sexually assaulted in the state of California, and every 10 seconds, a uh, child abuse report is made. And enough is enough. April 28th, we're coming out <clears throat> down to the corner of 4th and San Benito for the annual Walk a Mile in Our Shoes. It starts at 10 a.m. We encourage everybody to get involved and come. It is a family-friendly event. This year, we initiated the Red Shoe Challenge, where you can challenge coworkers or other companies, organizations, uh, in an effort to raise awareness and uh, raise money to support the cause. Money is split between Amaya's House and Community Solutions, two vital resources within our community that serve many women, children, and families in our community and beyond. Um, yeah. no, we really just want to encourage everybody to come out every year. It's a great time and fun time. 
but it talks about a serious issue and brings light to a serious issue um, in a really family fun way. So, you know, we're really grateful and, and think Mayor Velasquez uh, for always coming out every year. And we hope more of you guys come out and come participate and, you know, challenge your friends, challenge somebody else. Let's see how big the teams could get. Thank you. Patricia Saucedo. National Crime Victims Rights Week, April 8th through the 14th, 2018. Whereas Americans are victims of more than 20 million crimes annually, affecting individuals and communities. And now therefore, I, Ignacio Velasquez, Mayor of the City of Hollister, to hereby proclaim the week of April 8th through the 14th, 2018, as Crime Victims Rights Week, express our sincere gratitude for those service providers and criminal justice professionals who are committed to improving our response to victims of crime, that they may find relevant assistance, support, peace, and justice. Thank you for coming out today. Um, Mayor, Mayor Velasquez, city council members, um, thank you for the time uh, for taking the time to acknowledge next week's uh, National Victims Crime Week. Um, this year's theme is to expand the circle. Um, basically, to expand the circle to all crime victims, especially those most vulnerable. And what I've learned um, as the victim services manager for our county in the last two years, really, is that crime has no boundaries. It can affect anyone at any time all it takes is being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And so we must have compassion and commitment to honor victims' rights and to recognize their voice through their active participation in the judicial process. And so again, thank you very much for taking the time to acknowledge uh, next week's very important um, Victims' Crimes Week, National Victims' Crimes Thank Crime. you very much. Thanks. We're going to move forward now with the consent agenda. Are there any items council would like to pull? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull uh, A9. A7. A7. Do we have any from the public? You two have pulled, it's been A7 and A9 so far? I have an A8. A8. I need to recuse myself from the vote on item A6 due to conflict of interest with one of the sites. Okay. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as modified with the recrusion of Councilman Clower on A6 vote. Okay. Second. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll move to item A7. Mayor, council members, uh, any questions on A7? Yeah, I pulled the item. I just wanted an explanation as to why are we making these changes. I mean, I thought we already had the structure in place. It has nothing to do with the structure, council member. It, it strictly, the state of California updated their qualifications or professional qualification <coughs> certification program in 2013. And we're just going through the process of updating our um, job descriptions to reflect that. Okay, so when you, no, no, you're good. You're good. say fire division chief is not a battalion chief. Correct. Now there's another layer there. There's the chief, the fire division, and then the battalion chief. Correct, that's always been, and that's um, the Alvarez division chief, Alvarez's position currently. Okay, so I, I thought it was, it was assistant chief at one time. So I, mm, no. that's all right, I just wanted to get Too much fun. I just wanted to get it cleaned up that well, why are we doing this and if it's just a yeah, state mandate. Just, just, yeah, just updating the job qualifications to include the National Wildfire Training Group as well as the California Incident Command uh, okay. certification program as well. 
Okay, any other questions? No. Any questions from the public? Yes, Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. On item A7, resolution number 201878, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Hollister approving and authorizing the updated job descriptions within the Hollister Fire Department. I have one speaker, Zavon Quesada. Good evening, community of champions. I'm Zavon, and I am a champion also, and I'm also a full-blown artist and a, a driver and other things to add to that. I don't have nothing against the fire department. I really don't. I just feel that uh, talking about something that they can handle together on their own is something that they can do as a unity. They're strong. They know what they're doing. You know, they're, they're firemen. To put it on an agenda, to, to talk about something like that, I mean, not off subject, but where's the rec center or, or the animal with the lady lost her, animal, her, her family? How many months do we have to come to get that on the agenda? Or instead of talking about fire department update descriptions, you guys are awesome. They're firemen. C can we leave that to them and, and not have to talk about it on the agenda where the city council is coming to talk about things of difference, things of something of new? I, I'm, really, I'm really sad about the agenda. The reg re rec center is not on here. I've been talking over two months about it, and nothing's even. And what about the woman, Scooter? I, I, I'm pretty sure that's the name. She came in here crying, sharing her love about her, anim her friend. Nothing on here. Nothing on here about any of that, about what resolution, about what's going on. Instead, we're talking about, you know, okay, so, so what's going to happen with that, with the job descriptions? They're just changing a little bit? That's more duties? That's cool. I, I think the firemen are awesome. They do a good job. And they're always trying to go out there and promote to get, like, uh, donations from, you know, not having to see too much for money because they're getting donations out there, like, in front of Safeway and stuff, asking for donations, which is awesome. It shows community. It shows us as a drive because we're drivers and we're champions. And this, I'm sorry, I'm disturbed about it because... I really was hoping that the council and the city of the, the mayor, the mayor of the city, uh, would be like, you know what? We should have the uh, rec center on here. I mean, where's rec center at? And instead we're having this, a resolution. <sighs> please, please, my community of champions, for we are. Let's do something to bring a difference to this community that's going to bring something of a destination for our youth. Something that's going to be like, wow, I live in Hollister. That's awesome. Please. I'm asking please now, because I am part of this community as well. And, and, and talking about the firemen, Unless you're gonna say that they're awesome, I mean, we should we should really put things of discussion that's mattering right now, and that's the animals being put to sleep, people's loved ones, or how about the rec center that looks all brick? I mean, come on, please. Thank you. Okay. There are no more speakers, Mr. Mayor. More speakers. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve A7. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Going to go item A8. Hello, Mayor and co Council members. Uh, we put this on, on for to, for this you. This is an item from the public. I'm oh, ready. sorry. Here you are. Resolution number 2018-79, a resolution of the City Council of City of Hollister adopting revisions to the City of Hollister's purchasing policy. We have one speaker, Zavon Quesada. about living in Hollister, California, San Benito County. My name is Zavon, I'm a full-blown artist and I'm a motivational speaker and I'm here. Uh, so I just wanna know, what are we purchasing? Like, is this like a policy? Are we gonna purchase a park? Are we gonna purchase, you know, swings? Are we gonna purchase a water slide park? What, what are we purchasing? Because uh, for instance, I think we've been purchasing nothing but like, we're actually giving like property to build houses. Unless we're gonna purchase something that's meaning of matter of a place of this place we call Hollister. I don't see what we need to do with purchasing other than, hey, uh, that idea of that park is awesome. We should purchase that idea and like put it right here in the city. We should, honestly. A other than that, I mean, like honestly, another subject that we're talking about that really, I mean, come on, please, city council, please. I have respect for you guys, I do, I do, I really do. And it might come up here acting like I don't or I don't, I care about all of us. We're all a community, even the council. I mean, really. I don't know, uh, Miss Luna, but you said the, the, the decisions weren't made here. I'd really like to go to the room where they're making the decisions to put on the agenda. I would like to know, is there a city council meeting for that? Because there's a lot of ideas and innovators out there that want to speak about brilliance, but they don't have, you know, they don't have the voice like that. Well, I'll be a voice because uh, I live here too, and I love my community of champions. And they're all here in front of me listening and saying like, wow, I wonder if, you know, cool. I mean, purchasing, what are we purchasing, Mr. Mayor? Uh, uh, 
just wanted to t get some kind of clear vision of what it means to purchase, like, like are we gonna purchase something cool or like is this, are we just gonna go all out or are we, I mean, I'm just wondering, another thing on the agenda that's taking the place of something that can matter, like a rec center. Thank you, Mr. Posada. Just so you understand, on, as we post the agendas, all the information in the background, the 400 pages, are all attached on the internet. You feel free to read it, understand how these policies work, why we have to follow these rules. So you have a better understanding, please feel free to sit here through the meeting to learn about what we're really doing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. carries. Item A9, Councilmember Luna. Yes, I pulled the, um, this item off the agenda. And um, just going back as to how long ago was the travel policy um, <coughs> actually updated? I believe it's been a while. And if so, what would be any changes to this now? The, um, the last travel policy was 2006, which was before me, so sorry if it was the exact thought process uh, back then. But the main re reason is we're updating. They're uh, allowing people to really understand why the, what they can do or can't do. There's new modes of transportation. There's Lyft, Uber that people can take. And it's just to help everybody be a little bit, be a little bit more uh, efficient and, uh, like I say, telling them what they can or can't do. Okay. Does the policy also include any statement as to, on travel, what could be charged to the city credit card or not? That's more through the uh, city's uh, CalCard policy. CalCard? Yeah. This is just more of the tra just uh, travel. What, per what diem? The, per diem and what you can be reimbursed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from council? Do we have any city reports? Yes, Mr. Mayor. On item A9, resolution number 2018-80, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Hollister adopting a revised City of Hollister travel policy. We have one speaker, Zavon Casada. My name is Zavon, and I'm a full-blown artist, and uh, I'm here in front of a group of champions. I just want to know if, if uh, we're all going to be able to travel where we're ever going because the travel policy, <sighs> I just want to like have everybody sink this in, like travel policy. Like wh what are we talking about? Travel policy? Like, please. I come up here to reread this and to let people understand, even me, someone of brilliance, because I'm surrounded by it, wants to know and understand why is this on the agenda again? Like, what's it for? Like travel policy? I mean, I'm pretty sure the Council and the other city workers know how to budget the, the car that they get probably for the city. Cash on city right here, we'll, we'll charge you, don't trip. I mean, we don't need to have a, rev I mean, if it's a revise, I mean, that's something, uh, wouldn't you guys want to talk about when you're here for an hour before the meeting starts and you're talking about things of discussion and no one else can be in here, just you guys? I thought those were things would be, you would be discussing without, you know, any further notice or do, because other things of importance are on here, like what's going on? with the, the director and the also the employers that are working in the facility that put that woman's dog to sleep. What's going on with that? Because I'll tell you what, that woman, I don't know if anybody paid attention, but she was really sad. She missed her animal, her friend, her, her, her family. And, 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 it's not, and it's not on here about what the resolution was of that. And I'm sorry, you know. Mr. Mr. Pasad, yes, I, yes, I, I'll, Mr. I'll repeat, I, look, we, we yes. love for the public to be involved. We <laughs> want you to be involved, but you, you're straying from the item again. I encourage you again, please read the 400 pages we have to read. Or how about I come and you can read it to me, Mr. Mayor, every, we can have coffee. Every, and you can read do. it to me, we can kick back, you can tell me the whole 400 pages, we, like, we hey, dude, listen to this. But you know? it's very important to understand how government works. These are procedures really? that have to be put in place. I understand this, Mr. Mayor, that Wait. this woman's animal was put to sleep illegally, practically but done so wrong, and nothing was done about it. We're talking about a different item here. Yeah, a different item. That's, uh, why is it on the agenda? It's not Literally. But honestly, the woman came Thank into. You. Thank you. You can do it probably, but not on this item. Do we have any other? There are no more speakers, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Is there you have a question? Is it done? Okay. Is there a motion? <coughs> There's motion. Is there a second? Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Thank carried. you very much. We'll go to item B1. I'm just going to clarify that was Vice Mayor Luna that motioned. Yes? Yeah. The motion was by 
Uh, Councilmember Friend, seconded by oh. Councilmember Flower. Okay, we're going to item B1. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, real quickly, um, as you know, the city of Hollister formerly had a redevelopment agency. The redevelopment agency was abolished in 2012. We had some existing debt out there um, that we continue to pay until 2033. Um, it has come to our t attention uh, by uh, uh, Stiefel, who is our loan underwriters, that um, it may be economically feasible to move forward and, and consider doing a refinance of the 2009 bonds. Um, right now, it, it would appear that uh, there could be a, a community savings of about $58,000 a year um, if we refinance. The city of Hollister, however, will only reasonably see about maybe $6,000 of that, but our other taxing agencies within the community uh, will recognize or realize the additional savings of $52,000, so the school <coughs> districts, et cetera. So right here, I'm just asking for sort of consensus to move forward, um, and as you know, um, refinancing or you know issuing is, is obviously a lot of work, but uh, refinancing is, is a, a lot of work as well. Um, and I just wanted to uh, make sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, if the council's desires to move forward, um, I can have uh, Stiefel begin uh, putting together the documents for that, and we should probably have it done within the next few months or so. So if there's no heartache, I'll just move forward with question with I have for you. Sure. Is that after the cost uh, After the cost of issuance and, and everything stuff? Yes. Else? Yes, sir. That's yes. And again, the term, uh, nothing changes with the term. It's basically the savings would be sought in uh, interest and, and the yields. So that's where the, that money is actually saved. Okay, any other questions from council? <coughs> no. Do we have any speaker cards? Mr. Mayor. All right, is there consensus to move forward? Yeah. Please yes. do, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna move to public input. This is the time for anyone in the audience to speak on any item not on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. Speaker cards are available in the lobby and they are to be completed and give it to the city clerk before speaking. When the city clerk calls your name, please come to the podium, state your name and city for the record and speak to the city council. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes with a maximum of 30 minutes per subject. Please note that state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking action on any item not on the agenda. Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Julie Vieira. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, I would just like to remind everybody of two events coming up that the Chamber of Commerce is putting <clears throat> on. Um, first is April 12th is the Business Expo and Job Fair. It is from three to seven at the Veterans Memorial Building. And as of just a few minutes ago, we have 37 um, businesses that have signed up to participate. Tomorrow night at five o'clock is uh, the end of when you can sign up for a booth because we do have to let our vendors know. I would like to thank Technova and Infinity Staffing for supporting this event and being our sponsors for it. The other thing we have is April 18th is our first responders lunch and learn. Um, all first responders, uh, our local police, fire, sheriff, um, uh, ambulance are all going to be treated to lunch. Um, whoever shows up will, be, um, will have a free lunch. It is our lunch and learn. Our speakers are Chief Westrick, Chief Del Campo, and Sheriff Darren um, Thompson. And our sponsors for that event is Central Ag Supply, um, Councilman Gillio. Um, Golden Eagle Mortgage, the Garden Shop, Hollister Auto Parts, and uh, Richland Communi Communities are sponsoring all the first responders' lunches. So we would like the public to join us from 11.30 to 1 to hear a public update about public safety. It's going to be held at the fire station number one, um, and it's going to be catered uh, catered events. So if you want to participate in either one of these events, just call us at the Chamber of Commerce. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Lisa Bond. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. My name is Lisa Bond. I'm a resident of Hollister and a huge supporter of our historic, historic, historic Hollister Motorcycle Rally. 
I first moved to Hollister in 1990 and I've always appreciated our small town and enjoy when local events can bring our community together. I'm here tonight to ask the three council members that voted to cancel this year's rally to reconsider your decision to allow the community and our group to take over the organization and promotion of the rally. I have always been a big supporter of the rally and hearing that this event was being canceled without any further consideration caused me to step up with others who feel the same way and to participate in saving our motorcycle rally. This rally is an event that is attended and enjoyed by a diverse group of people in and out of our community, not just bikers. In a few short weeks, there have been many in our community who are ready to volunteer their time and have been discussing many options that not only will give the rally up and running, but will also benef benefit many Hollister nonprofits. There are also already several sponsors eager to cover the cost of this year's rally, get the event up to speed, and plans to keep the city of Hollister financially neutral in this event. We would like to keep the rally in our community as a locally organized event that benefits many of our local nonprofit groups. We believe that we can raise thousands of dollars for our local nonprofit groups for, and for our community. These funds will benefit numerous groups and positively impact many of our residents. I'm asking you to give our local nonprofits and our community a chance to make our rally and our community a success. Give us the opportunity to find a reasonable solution rather than just throw in the towel without further consideration. I and many others in our community do not feel that the correct response to the issues of the rally are to discontinue it, but rather to find a way for the rally to function in a purpose so that it's not a burden on the city finances and is fact an advancement to our local nonprofit groups. City Manager, will you please ask the city to reconsider their vote on the rally during your city manager's report? Thank you for your time and consideration of this matter. Thank you very much. All right, everyone, if we could hold, hold the applause, please. Thank you very much. Mark Scher. Scher. Sure. Mayor, City Council, my name is Mark Shear. I reside in Hollister. I'm also a, a huge supporter of the historic motorcycle rally. I'm here tonight to ask the three of you <clears throat> that voted no on the rally to reconsider your decision, decision and to let the community and our group take over the event, take over the rally. As Lisa said, in a few short weeks, we and several others have been able to line up several sponsors that we believe will cover the cost of this year's uh, rally. <clears throat> I've been involved in major community events such as the North County, North Monterey County Strawberry Festival. I've seen firsthand how local nonprofit groups can benefit from a large event like these. <clears throat> I've also seen these great events, I've also seen how these great events can be run by bad decisions and the lack of understanding that these events have to benefit our local nonprofit groups. The rally has the potential of bringing hundreds of thousands of dollars to our local nonprofits and our community. I'm a member of, of a couple of veterans groups and also the Hollister Lions Club. These groups are also willing to be, to be involved to make the rally happen. <clears throat> I'm asking you to give our local nonprofits and our community a chance to make our rally and our community a, a success. Our group can make our historic Hollister rally happen again this year. As Lisa said, waiting for another year is not, not an answer and really just kills the rally. City Manager, will you please ask the council to reconsider their vote on the rally during the city manager's report. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Everyone, if you could please, again, please hold any applause. Peter Lago. New to the city of Hollister, I actually moved here to buy Johnny's Bar, which automatically puts me in a conflict of interest to ask you to reconsider this. But having come from Hawaii, I have a background in concerts and events, and the main thing that we worry about is whether or not we're going to have enough people there to cover the event. Obviously, that's a non-issue here. We're going to have people that are going to come here. They're going to spend their money. And I think the idea that I'm in support of is allowing all of the nonprofits to catch this. It's the equivalent of having a salmon run but not throwing your nets into the water. You know they're going to come. You might as well put the money to the best good it can, and you've got a group standing by here that's going to put it to the best use that I can think of. So if we're going to have people here, we might as well do something with that money in the community, and I stand 100% behind it. My background is in concerts and events, and as a technical director of the EA Sports My Invitational and PGA Tour, I am at your disposal for any kind of 
help that I can offer. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, thank you. Marty Richmond. Marty Richmond from Hollister. Uh, I was going to speak on another subject, but I'll change it based on uh, previous uh, comments. Um, if I had a nickel for everybody who stood at this podium and tell me how they're going to save the rally, I'd never, I'd never have to worry about my retirement income ever. Okay, uh, I don't. I'm not sure the people who come up here understand what the problem is. I, they're speaking from their heart. I have no problem with that. They want to, they want to do things for the nonprofits. That's great. The major problem we have is we cannot get insurance for the people who supply the public safety and you can talk and talk and talk and talk but we are betting this entire city on the on the fact that someone doesn't misbehave in a big crowd now no one can guarantee that and maybe it hasn't happened a lot it's happened here more than once we've been lucky nobody's gotten really badly hurt even though there was a, a big shooting um, but we all know what's going on. The people who, who we normally go out and hire our public safety help from, they won't even cover their people anymore. And a lot of them won't even allow them to come here anymore because they understand what happens. I have seen the figures. I have been a CalPERS uh, person taking, taking down those things. I know what they pay in disability. And sometimes they've got to pay it for the lifetime of the person who is injured. It's a fortune especially if it's a public safety person who might be entitled to a lot of money when they retire. Those are the facts. I didn't make them up. I'd be happy to have the rally if we could get insurance coverage. The idea that we'll be self-insured when we can't even afford to buy it doesn't make any sense to me. There's a reason we can't afford to buy it. I never met an insurance guy who doesn't willing to make a profit. He can't make a profit because of the size of the risk. If the risk wasn't there, then it wouldn't be a problem. But the risk is always there, and we're not going to be able to cover it. The groups that, that want to do it, they should start looking for the rally next year when they have adequate time. Everybody says, this guy couldn't do it, but I can do it. This lady couldn't do it, but I can do it. There's something fundamentally wrong because nobody seems to be able to do it. Every time they do it, somebody either doesn't pay the bill, we had somebody walk away with, what, $95,000, or we don't get the money, or we can't get accountability for the, for the uh, amount of um, taxes that we bring in. There's, every time there's some other problem. So obviously it's not working. The Gilroy Garlic Festival uh, uh, is run by a private group. I have no problem with a private group running this. But you can't come in in March and say I'm going to run it in July and figure out you're going to straighten out all the problems. I would like to see a private group do it because they don't have to sit here and talk and talk and talk and talk about all these things that, that have political ramifications. I would like to see them do it. But you know what? I don't see how they're going to do it in 2018. It doesn't make any sense to me. The risks are going to be too high. I'd be more than happy to say to them, sure, show me your plan for 2019, but show it to me in January or in December of the year before. Don't come here when everybody's all revved up and wants to go. I just don't want to bet. You know, we worked, we worked our butts off to put, put some money back in the coffers in this city, and I don't want to risk it all on somebody I don't even know who may drive in here and do something really stupid because people do that all the time, unfortunately, and we would be uncovered. I want to point again at Santa Monica, when they had somebody intentionally run through the crowd with a car, the Supreme Court of the state of California ruled the city of Santa Monica was responsible, even though they had a lot of security, even though they had barriers up, and even though somebody did it on purpose, and it cost them billions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Zavon, <clears throat> Zavon Casada, please.
I think it's a brilliant idea and we would be in full bloom and it would rally and it would be awesome if we did it in that short time of period because it would get everybody fired up for it. I'm so excited to see people in here to say like, hey, whoa, the, the rally, what? And they come here and make a presence and their voice is heard. The rally is something we need to, you know, I too, and, 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 and you know, people could drive crazy anywhere. I could leave this thing and somebody could hit me with a car. A I mean like, we can't live our life like that. We have to live our life living it, being excited about things of entertainment and destinations coming to our place of, that really hasn't really none of them. The rally would be awesome. I think and believe that in full bloom, the rally would be 20 times better this year because it's in a short period of time. So many marketing ideas, rallying for the rally and giving the businesses that barely opened, that will have their first experience to have their business flourish and blooming with people, giving them the, the excitement of when they had, when they opened the doors to the new business they have. Give them a chance. Let them have their experience. Honestly, there's new businesses here. There's a man here. He has a business. He just, and he's, you know, he's doing it. Innovative, different. Let him enjoy having a full business with people jamming the music. Let him have that. That's greedy for the community not to give him the chance to do what he did when he opened the doors. Make a successful business run. Give it a bloom. Let the things in Hollister flourish, not destroy. The council, please understand. And the city manager, we need the rally. We need this to show us like, hey, the 20 days, do we did that. Giving the community the unity of what it is champions every single one of us is a champion and we can do this 10 days five days we can make it happen there's innovators business owners first time homeowners here waiting hungry want to see their business full and like go oh, go go we did it look at give me a hug it's there knocking hello hello we need to open the door let them in or tear down the wall because there's a lot of them coming give the people that are starting new businesses a chance to fill their full bloom please i'm asking that to let them let the ones that have a business that's it would be so exciting, right? To see your business. Look, it's all full. Giving each other a hug of, of doing it, of success. Making sure that you are a champion. I believe, I believe, honestly, that we can do it. And you know what? I, I'll dress up in a mascot outfit too. And I will help rally for the rally. That's a cool little marketing thing right there. Because why? Because we're brilliant. And we're a community of champions. Honestly, every single one of us in here. You know, believe it or not, we are. Sometimes I have to wake myself up again and say, whoa, Zoe, Vaughn, you're a champion, you're important. To let myself know like, hey, I'm only a champion because I'm surrounded by it, honestly. Give the new businesses that just opened, like the Epic Center, this man's Hollister House, give them a place, like, wow, to see it busy. See what its full potential could do, because the rally can do that for them. Let them know that the, what they're believing in is a success. Thank you. Thank you very much. There are no more speakers, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to item D1, City Manager's Report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of things, and then we'll, I'll address a, a couple of the speakers um, that spoke tonight. Um, I believe that there was a, uh, a just a, for a clarification and edification for uh, the audience, um, I believe there was a, a article written in Bonito Link that talked a little bit about our road project that's um, currently underway. Uh, just uh, another FYI is that project will probably go, be going off the bid by uh, Friday, hopefully tomorrow, but I'm gonna just say it'll hopefully be, be out by Friday. Um, where the money is coming from um, is about $1.7 million is our stip money, and that's state uh, money through COG. Uh, $206,000 is actually coming from the SB1 money, and then the balance of that $3.3 .3 or $3.4 million is actually coming from the general fund as part of the uh, City Council's goals and objectives from last year. Uh, and just so I'm clear, um, this is for fiscal year 1718. Okay, now in uh, fiscal year 1819, uh, the SB1 money for us is approximately $650,000, and in order for us to take full advantage of that, um, this, the city council is going to have to commit about $206,000 of general fund money for uh, that fiscal year. Um, you will be having a resolution on your next agenda uh, identifying uh, those projects. Um, that has to be done by June of, of this year to make sure that we take advantage of the 1819 money. So that, I just wanted to make sure I made that clear because I think there was a, a, a couple of wrong figures possibly in, in Benito Link. Um, with, with regard, there's some, big, some questions about the agenda tonight, et cetera. Um, I wanna just tell the, 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 
the folks out there um, in the audience and um, on TV is that uh, the City Council and the City of Hollister has several uh, committees and or commissions. And so you are um, able to come to any one of those. And to echo exactly what the mayor had said, um, just picking up the agenda doesn't necessarily give anybody any of the in, uh, information. The agenda is basically uh, a, a document that we use uh, to list and brief descriptions and recommendations that's in accordance with the Brown Act. But as um, uh, Mayor Velasquez mentioned, there's sometimes 400 or sometimes 800 pages of backup material, so you will absolutely know exactly what every item is. It's not about their policy makers. We follow what the policy makers are telling us to do. And sometimes, yes, there's mandates, and sometimes it's just boring stuff, but ultimately it's just business. This is, we're a $53 million a year corporation that it has to run um, pursuant to, to their direction. My door is always open. If you want to come meet with me anytime to talk about items on the agenda, I would love to have you come in and we can have a discussion about how this gets put together. Um, with, the, with the rally folks, um, I don't know if Chief Westrick is available. Uh, I'm a, I have a meeting tomorrow night. I don't know if, there's an, uh, if he's available on Wednesday or Thursday, but I will make myself available Wednesday or Thursday evening to have a conversation with anybody who wants to talk about um, the rally and how to actually have this thing happen. Um, I'm not going to ask the council to put something on the agenda. The three of them who voted no absolutely know how to do that. They can say it at, during their council reports. But I think that um, we are intimately involved in this. Um, I've been around since the first one in 1995 uh, or 96. Um, I think that I can offer everybody here a little bit of insight of what it takes. Um, you, you obviously know that we've been through three or four promoters um, in the last several years. Um, there's a reason why they don't last. It's not that easy of an event to put on. This is not a garlic festival. There's not a gate fee. This is purely put together by sponsors and, and hoping that we have money that's being sold at either beer gardens or t-shirt sales or, or et cetera. Um, it is, it's, it's not an easy event to put on, and that's why we usually like to try to have things done in September and October. And there is nothing wrong with coming back to the council and saying that we are preparing for something in 19. But to Marty's point, there are some real insurance factors that have to be considered. Um, we have done an amazing job. The council has made some tough decisions to make sure that this city is now fiscally solvent. And if you don't want to risk this community's entire future on maybe one or two bad accidents. Um, and that's not to say that if they're going to happen, but we've had inc incidents in the past, um, and it's not like it can't happen. So I, I think that if, if, uh, if the group would like, I could, are you around on th Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. Wednesday. How about Wednesday at 6 o'clock? Anybody that wants to come down and talk about the rally, Please come down. We'll make ourselves available for a couple hours, and we'll discuss with you all the things that go into putting on the rally, okay? And then if the council wants to uh, uh, put something on the agenda, the, the, one of the no votes is, is the legal way of doing this, is that they can come up and say that during their council reports, and I'd be more than happy to put something back on if, in fact, they decide that they want to do that. So um, with that said, that completes my report. Okay. Do we have students here tonight? Yeah? Okay. We'll take a we'll take a five minute break to sign off on your paperwork. A recess. Thank you everyone.
All right, this time we're going to resume the meeting. We'll move to item F1. Mr. Mayor, I am recusing myself this item. Do you want to report why? And the reason being is that I live close to the proposed development. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Good evening. On March 19th, 2018, the City Council held a duly noted public hearing to introduce Ordinance 1154, an ordinance to prezone approximately 57.25 acres uh, into the Public Facilities Institutional Zoning District for future annexation into the corporate um, limits of the City of Hollister. The property is located at 1220 Monterey Street. It's known as a, uh, part of the southern campus of San Benito High School. Um, and staff was directed to schedule a second reading for today, April 2nd, 2018. There have been no changes to the proposed ordinance. Staff recommends read by title only, waive full reading, and adopt ordinance 1154. Uh, thank you, and are there any questions for staff? Any questions from council? No. Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Item F1, read by title only, waive full reading and adopt ordinance number 1154 in ordinance amending municipal code chapter 17.24.250 prezoning of specifically described real property, APN 02017042 and 02017043 to PF slash one public facility slash institutional. I have one speaker, Zaban Casada. We'd love to hear from you. Not here. Okay. Is there a motion? I'd like. Is that the only speaker? I'd like to make a motion that we read by title only and adopt Ordinance 1154. Okay. Second. There's a motion. <coughs> a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> Item F2. Hi. Uh, good evening. I uh, wanted to give a quick, uh, brief uh, summary for the council um, regarding this item. Um, the City of Hollister collects one-time impact fees from new development to finance the purchase of equipment and construct or expand facilities to serve new development. The Mitigation Fee Act requires a fee study to assure that impact fees collected by local agencies do not exceed the cost to construct or expand new facilities and purchase new equipment to store new development. Today, impact fees are collected for equipment in facilities for police and fire protection, park improvements and acquisition of land, storm drainage, water, and sewer transmission services. Uh, current impact fees are based on an outdated 2006 impact fee study. Shortly after that fee study was adopted, the Great Recession occurred. Uh, staff is recommending that the City Council adopt the attached resolution approving a professional services agreement with Wildan Financial Services to provide a fee study to update impact fees collected from new development. Staff al also recommends that the impact fee study include costs for future equipment and facility needs for the city hall and city yard. So essentially the intent of this study is to provide uh, a nexus to assess the impact fees on new development. As new development comes in, the city needs to uh, provide services for new development. And so this is a mechanism where we would collect fees put them, um, use them for improvements to uh, various uh, governmental um, aspects of Hollister for services uh, such as police and fire, uh, sewer transmission, um, public works, and city hall, so. Okay, Council Member Flower. So the units that are, have already been approved, will they be paying the new updated impact fees except for the city hall and the city yard? Is that, do I understand that correctly? 
Uh, no, they they would not. They, they this impact fee study would take would probably take about four months to complete, and once it's uh, completed, presented to the council and adopted, uh, new developments would uh, be required to pay those fees. Okay, but let's say we have an existing tentative map that's approved. Yep. They're not going to pay the city hall or city yard fees because it wasn't a condition of their approval. Correct. But they will pay the updated correct. fees that existed when they were approved. Correct. That's correct. Sorry okay. for the confusion no. on that. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Councilor Argilio. It appears that uh, about 10,335 uh, 10, is coming out of the general fund. And then it looks like all the other uh, funds that are supported by impact fees are paying for this study. Is that sound about accurate? Th that is correct. Thank you. Questions. Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. On item F2, resolution number 2018 81, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Hollister approving a professional services agreement with Wildan Financial Services for a public facility fee study. I have two speakers. The first speaker is Zavon Casada. Good evening, my community of champions. Yes, we are champions. Um, so I, I think I, um, you were describing what you were talking about, right? right just making sure. Okay, okay. Because I was just wondering, because um, to me, when it says like financial services for like a, a study, it, it, it just I was just wondering like sixty-two thousand dollars. I was like, wow, you know, like I mean, sixty-two thousand dollars is a lot of money right now because we're pretty tight with money, right, with the city. You know, you don't want to do too many things with money. But you know, if it's gonna help the city prosper to something of flourish and bloom, then I'm totally with it. But if it's going to be something to study of, 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 uh, of just another thing to put on the agenda, then I mean we should think about it. $62,000 can go to a lot of other things that the city needs. It really could. I, I, and I just, I just don't understand why isn't something for like, you know, what about the homeless? $62,000 can do them really well. I mean, it can help out the facility that's not offering services right now. They're really not. The services there are really bad. So maybe $62,000 can help them get the services back on track. I'm just saying, I, I don't know. I see money involved, and I just want to make sure that it's going to the right place for the city. Okay, Mr. Sa. Marty Richmond. Thank you. Just for the benefit of anybody in the audience, uh, through the chair, um, there's a legal requirement to keep the impact fee uh, aligned with the actual costs. And therefore, the impact fee study has to be upgraded. You can't just adopt one and keep it forever. Not if you got, not if you're smart. Anyway, I guess you could do it, but uh, not if you need an upgrade. Now, um, the some items didn't get mentioned, and it may be because they're they're in a newer study, and I wanted to make sure I I, I understand that. So the library didn't get mentioned. I know we have a library impact fee now, so it, it, we're not going to bring it up. The speed maybe it's too too new to bring up the speed again. Uh, did we ever put in an impact fee for the animal shelter? We discussed it. Uh, if we have not done it, uh, maybe if we're going to hire somebody to do to do an impact fee, we could we could get it done then. And the and the advantage would be that uh, you know the overhead gets all into one big pile rather than do a separate separate report. And I wonder if. Uh, um, I, I see you did the yard in the city hall. Yeah, did that. I didn't. Um, I was wondering. That's probably a brain session that came from the from the staff. I was wondering if uh, maybe uh, you'll just sit down and have some more brain sessions. See if you come up with whatever else you can come up with. The problem is when we miss the boat one time, it's usually a couple of years until we pick up again. So it can. Uh, I think the animal shelter would be a good idea. I mean, there's a lot of capital investment down in an animal shelter. Um, uh, we're not talking about operational money, of course, just capital investment. And there's a lot of capital investment in there, and I think it would be a good idea to make sure that, that uh, we keep it up to, up to speed as the, as the city grows, the population grows, and we're also covering the county, um, so the county needs to do something about that. But as that grows, the animal shelter uh, space requirement is going to grow. As they change their operations in the future, whatever that might be, it's rarely I ever see things shrink down most of the time they grow because the requirements 
uh, require more space. So I think we ought to think hard about that, and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. There are no more speakers, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Mayor Frank. I just wanted to ask staff, if I believe, if I read this right, the adjustment to these fees would include the operation of part of that goes to police, which which is the animal shelter. Correct, police. So I mean, the CIPs and everything would be covered under this. Also, through the uh, if, if the animal shelter needed more money, it would go through the police department, which are part of these fees. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. To, to, to sort of go down that, as, as uh, Mr. Richmond mentioned, these, aren't, these are not operational um, fees. These are fees collected for capacity and growth. Um, and because the animal control shelter is under the uh, public safety department of uh, the police department, those, those items will be addressed in that nexus fee study. So. Thank you. You're very welcome. Just to, uh, Ms. Richmond also brought up the the new library or the yes. fees, but we talked about that tell center or the um, community center mixed together those. And that, that hasn't, um, so the tell center What do we slash, need to be at that point to yeah. get there? So, well, I think a decision has to be made concept. whether or not that's the direction okay. that we're going and then we can conduct a new nexus study and, and again, of course, always add that to the, in the future. Okay. 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 Any other questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Go to item F3. <laughs> it's not really me. I don't <laughs> um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The item before you is a resolution uh, that is, uh, it's kind of our catch-all um, resolution this year, and it's to address all the street closures for the Hollister Downtown Association's events, um, including uh, Lights on Celebration, the Farmer's Market, Street Festival, et cetera. So uh, I think you adopted one very similar to this last year. It should, um, I know uh, Jean's here if there's any questions. Um, if not, uh, staff recommends to adopt the attached resolution uh, uh, approving the street closures for HDA events. Any questions from council? I do have a question. We're, um, so a few moments ago, we talked about the dangers of an event. If mm -hmm. a car comes in and crashes into bystanders or the public, In one world, we're saying we can't risk it. In the other, we're risking it quite a few weeks out of the year. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it we're trying to accomplish? I mean, what's fair? And what, what are the costs of doing these events every time we're setting up? For example, Farmer's Market is every week for 12 weeks, or I think it uh, is? No, it's longer than that. Right? Long? It's 22, 20, 22 weeks. 22 weeks. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so what is the cost every time we set up? Um, Have we really ran? Yeah, our, I, I believe Mike is, what, is it like $2,600? About $3,000 for the setup and teardown. Each and if, time. Each time. And if you'll recall, when, when we have the, um, uh, the farmer's market, for instance, is, that's a very good example. Um, when we close the street at, um, at when we close San Benito Street at 4th Street, you'll notice that we have uh, the red K-rail first. There's a series of um, K-rail that's set up at that end of the block. Um, and then there is no, no technical setup for probably a, maybe another 100 or 200 feet away. So it's, it's a, you got to get past the K rail and go a distance before you would actually start to enter into where there's a, con a, a group of people congregating. So we try to address that from a public safety perspective as much as we possibly can. Um, the difference between, say, the rally and that, um, you know, we, the uh, part of it is just is that the street, you know, is sort of open for, for motorcycles. And I, again, it, there's not going to be as much damage from a, a motorcycle as opposed to a vehicle, but there, we, that's what. So we're, we're spending $70,000, 78000 yeah. for the farmer's market. Yeah. There's several streets I know because I, I see it every event that a car can go right through that event without anything blocking it. On the side roads is, is side road, yeah, a little bit more so difficult. Yeah. There's quite a bit of danger there, too. What I'm asking is, 
we need to be fair on these types of things. We can't just say, well, we like one event, so we're going to go ahead and spend $80,000 on it. We don't like the other event because something might happen in that event. Let's be honest about these conversations. Mm -hmm. They're all beneficial to our community. I love the farmer's market. We all love the um, lights on parade and all the other events. But I think we can't just say to one event, this one's dangerous because something might happen, a crash might happen, but the other ones are not dangerous because a crash will not happen. No, and I, I think the real big difference, Mr. Mayor, on, on this is that um, our, our concern, speaking directly about the rally versus farmer's market, our big concern is not necessarily about general liability. Our, our concern is really about workers' compensation liability for officers from outside communities. There's zero coverage for that. Well, what I, the reason I'm pointing that out, mm -hmm. the incident that was talked about earlier in Santa Monica mm -hmm. was a farmer's market. Right. And that is where the city got sued for the millions of dollars. But, we, but see, we're, we're insured from a liability perspective, from that perspective. Ambasia will cover that in that event. Ambasia is not going to cover us from a, for an outside officer. They've, they've said that. Um, so that's, why, that's truly the difference between paying for somebody's workers' comp potentially forever and somebody getting hit by a car at an event. And is that fair to say, Brett? Okay. We can say it any way we want to say it, but the reality is reality. One event we're spending $70,000, mm -hmm. the other event we're not spending a dollar on. And one event and we both of them have safety concerns. Yeah, but one of them has insurance, the other doesn't. Well, <laughs> that's, no, they, that, but that's, a, that's a huge that's difference. That's not necessarily true, but I just want to point that out. So we're, we're understanding this in a fair manner. It's very important to me. And again, okay. these are all great events in my mind. They're all worth it. Absolutely. Uh, Council Member Friend. Do we require the HDA to have insurance also? The HDA has their own general liability insurance, and when they're closing the streets, they we ha have, is it a two million or a five? Uh, require, what's, a, what's our public assembly permit required now, two? I believe it's up to two million. Yeah, it's two million dollars now, general, general liability insurance now. Okay, any other questions? Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Oh, actually, no, not on F3. I'm sorry, okay. not F3, sorry. All right. Next one. Okay, is there a motion on item F3? So moved. There's a motion, is there second. a second? Motion second, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. motion carries. Item F4. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, Christine, can I please have the presentation? Thank you. Um, I'm here tonight to give you an update on McCarthy Park. And um, if you right click at the bottom on Adobe Acrobat, all the way at the bottom, all the way, at the, there you go. Go the one on the left, there you go. Um, here to give you an update on McCarthy Park, hopefully get some consensus and direction on the concept um, so we can go ahead and proceed with the construction drawings um, with the hopes of getting approval for that in August so we can go out to bid and get moving on this. Um, I know it was important to the council that this was a public process, so at the beginning here, I'll give you a little recap on all the efforts we took to involve the public in the design of the concept. I'm gonna turn it over to Elizabeth um, from BFS Landscape Design. She's gonna go through the presentation of the concept, and then I'm gonna take it back and we'll talk about dollars and schedules. So, um, from the start, we made a concerted effort to involve the public. Um, our first attempt was to invite them to a uh, meeting of the park master plan uh, community meeting. And to do that, I put up three large four by eight signs out at the site on posts um, telling everybody about the meeting. At that meeting, we pro staff had pro done a quick drawing, couple concepts, uh, we presented that to the public at that uh, meeting and received input from them. Approximately six to eight people showed up at that meeting for that purpose. So that was good. Um, we proceeded to uh, come before you. you. You awarded the contract to BFS Landscape Designs. We did an initial um, uh, concept. It, we attempted to present it to the uh, Parks Commission at the March 
no, February uh, Parks Commission meeting. And before that meeting, I personally, um, I stamped them all, I sealed them all, I stuffed them all. Um, we sent out in the English and Spanish, including a concept plan of the park, to every address within 2,000 feet of the park. Normally, we only do 300 feet. We went further, we did 2,000 feet. That was over, over 1,000 uh, individually addressed letters to the public that live around that park, inviting them to that meeting for the presentation. Unfortunately, at that meeting, we did not have a quorum of the Parks and Rec Commission, uh, they, so we could not hold that meeting. They left. Um, Elizabeth was here to do the presentation, so we actually did a presentation to the public that showed up, and we got 14 people to show up to that one. Um, we gave the presentation to those 14 people. We received feedback from them. We polished this a little more. We did present it at the March uh, Parks and Rec Commission meeting uh, to the commission. Um, I don't think we had more than three people here from the public for that meeting. Um, and I'll turn it over to Elizabeth now for her presentation. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Elizabeth Matz, and I am a uh, landscape architect with DFS. Oh. Is that the magic number, Sal? <laughs> that is the magic Sorry. number. <laughs> Good evening. So I'm going to take a little bit of time this afternoon or this evening to talk about the concept plan as well as the program. Oh, is there the new one on there, Mike? The new concept? It was supposed to be. I don't. Uh, IT must not have got it on. I, I have it. I can put it on if you guys have a second. So do you want to just use the old one? Uh, just go with the old one. We'll okay. This is the. Yeah, that picture is coming up soon. Yeah, this is the new concept plan, but this is the original concept that we presented to the Parks and Recreation Commission. So this is sort of, this slide right here is the overall. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I have one back there. <laughs> um, this is the overall plan that we presented back in February to the Parks and Recreation Commission, which kind of <coughs> turned into a community event. But just to talk a little bit about the park, it's about a one and a half acre park and what we're proposing on doing is kind of creating a park that almost has two different parts, a passive recreation and an active recreation zone. And so if we go to the next slide. The um, open space part, which is going to be more on the left-hand side of the park, um, what we're really focused on is a park commons area. This is about 30,000 square feet of grass with a perimeter walking trail around it. And what's anchored to the side of this park is what we're calling a skate spot slash performance stage. And um, one of the features that was presented during the um, programming stage for this park was to incorporate some sort of skate component to the community that was a really high priority program um, for them. So what we were trying to do was sort of leverage the um, stage component, which was also a high priority item, and put those two pieces together. And I'll talk a little bit more about why we did that, but that, um, that element is to the side. And then to the outer ring, what we're doing is we're looking at providing some um, picnic areas, a picnic pavilion um, for large gathering, maybe like 15 to 20 people, and then a smaller picnic area, which would be a little bit more for individual families. And then on the next slide, what we have is we have the active play zone. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be keeping in place the existing basketball court as well as the existing play um, ground element. And around that, we're going to have a proposed splash pad, which would have a 
water, um, water activity zone, as well as some additional swings to supplement the playground. And then a couple of the other elements that were a part of the program were including a handball court, as well as a climbing feature. So we're, we were able to sort of take all these elements and put them together. Um, during the community meeting that we had, we had some great feedback relating to the need to provide some extra shade and to provide some more um, walk, you know, some more trees. So we've tried to incorporate that into our new plan, which you'll see over here. But if we keep going through this, sorry, I don't know why this isn't working. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the character of the park and what we see McCarthy Park as being to the community of Hollister. Um, we really see this as being the ability to kind of build on an extension of the downtown core. Um, this is a place where we can have community gatherings, families and neighbors can come together. This is probably an underserved part of the community that doesn't have active recreation already. So we really want to bring that heart of the downtown community to the McCarthy Park. So just a little bit. So just to kind of highlight again what the park program would be. For the full, full build out of the park, what we'd be looking at is a splash pad area, a restroom building, which would be along with the splash pad, picnic areas, a skate spot, stage area, as well as active recreation um, components like the climbing wall, ball wall, additional play equipment, and then a passive recreation opportunity, which would include pathways for walking, as well as some integrated parkour equipment, which would allow for some outdoor fitness. And that really um, would be attractive to folks coming in on their morning walks and afternoon walks. So just to talk a little bit about the splash pad and what we're envisioning for the splash pad, we really see this um, opportunity to see an iconic feature kind of in the middle of the splash pad. Um, one of the things that we really liked was the water tower feature that kind of gives a nod to the kind of historic agricultural community of Hollister. Um, it also provides an iconic kind of element to the park. People can um, start to sort of identify McCarthy Park with the big water tower. And the great part about it is we can integrate it in as a splash pad feature. So it'd be really a neat idea for the park and for the community. So talking a little bit more about the skate, the skate spot slash stage, um, we partnered with Zach Wormhout out of Santa Cruz and he is a great skate park designer. He's worked all around the world. And when we first talked about the skate spot, and he noticed that we had a stage component, he really suggested that we leverage these two pieces together. The concern being that the stage itself is already going to be a attractive feature to a lot of skateboarders. It has different ledges and it'll have stairs and a ramp. And the idea of bringing those two pieces together really started to sound attractive to us. Because what we could do is during the times when the stage is not in use for like a community feature, we could provide the skate opportunity. Um, when we presented this to the community back in February, um, most of the people who attended that community meeting were interested in the stage and the skate, and they were extremely enthusiastic about what we were proposing here. So we're looking forward to continuing to develop this idea. One of the comments that did come up was to add a, a shade canopy over the stage is, and so we're pursuing that and looking at developing that as well. The next few items are just a few of the <laughs> program items. A uh, restroom facility for um, the, at the water, located next to the water um, splash pad. This would also provide the necessary enclosures for the utility. Um, the picnic shelter for the uh, group picnicking. Uh, the ball wall the, um, and the climbing wall, those two pieces can be integrated together. One side serves as a ball wall um, court, the other side serves as a climbing wall. So we can sort of leverage our space um, to make sure we're providing ample opportunity. And then we'll talk a little bit, we talked a little bit about providing some outdoor fitness um, stations. And then last really but not least, just want to talk a little bit about the sustainability that we're talking about for this park. Um, while we have a large turf area, which will serve as sort of a park commons, what we really want to try to do is create some bioswales and some opportunity to introduce native and drought tolerant plantings around the edges. 
This will allow us to definitely harvest and collect a lot of the storm water that's running through the site, make sure that we're treating it before we send it into the storm water system. And this also provides an opportunity for us to make sure that we're sustainably managing water, which is one of our most precious resources. So that is my presentation about the park. I'd like to um, answer any questions, but I think Mike is going to talk a little bit about cost. Now can I have the other picture? Thank you. So um, Elizabeth's uh, firm provided us with an engineer's estimate of what, what this uh, park was going to cost. So when we had them start doing this project, we asked for a basic park. And then we asked for a la carte items that we could add into the park. So uh, today I had staff throw together this slide, which will give you a visual representation of what each a la carte item adds to the total price. Now, currently, just your basic park, which is your grass, your pathways, your infrastructure, your picnic areas, your drinking fountains, it is 906906 Of that, we have a, a state grant for about 651000 That's why before you tonight on this item, you have a supplemental appropriation of about 250000 to get us to that number so that the basic park will be funded and we're ready to go. Along the right-hand side there, you see some of those other a la carte items that we can choose to include. Um, the stage, the lighting, uh, swing set, uh, the parkour stations, the splash pad, uh, the restroom building, the handball court, the climbing wall, and to remove the shredded rubber at the playground and put in uh, tiles. So uh, if you'd like, um, I'm not sure how you want to do this, but if you say what pieces you want to put in, we can click the boxes and uh, come up with a total for that park. Currently, there is $3.5 million in the park development uh, uh, fund, which is paid for by impact fees off of uh, develop, that development that has occurred. And um, if I was to make a rec staff recommendation is for full build out of the park. This park is unique. Uh, it actually has parking available around it. Uh, you have the commercial area to the west. You have the school to the uh, south. There's a, a lot of parking available. We have the ability to put a splash pad at this park and not impact a neighborhood like we impact the whale park area, Valley View area. In addition to that, this neighborhood is historically underserved. It's economically depressed and there's a lot of need for uh, a way to cool off in the summertime uh, not everybody has air conditioning last year we had several days that were over 116 degrees this would provide an opportunity for those people to go and cool down um, in addition to what our fire chief does I don't know if he's still here when he opens up the vets hall for cooling stations this is a little more fun way to cool it down Yes, sir. <clears throat> but we can't have the splash pad without the restroom, right? Yes, if you choose the splash pad, we have to click both the splash pad and the restroom, which effectively adds a million dollars to the cost. Well, I remember when we had some community meetings at the school, the stage was a big thing. The stage is a big thing. A lot of people wanted outdoor concerts there or something going on there, the stage, whether it's kids, shows, or concerts and because of the parking was going to be readily available it would have been a nice area to have a concert area so I think if nothing else the stage should could be part of it I'm not sure about the splash pad that's I'll let somebody else um, I think the lighting is important too because if you're going to have concerts out there you'd probably want lighting out there agree <laughs> Kelsey. 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 I'm just looking for more bang with the buck. This is on your credit card, right? Right. <laughs> nope. You have the money in the bank, and you Council. can't be spent on anything other than parks. Councilmember Gilio, I uh, had the opportunity to um, attend the uh, parks master plan update. Uh, 
have a draft document here of that, and then I'm going to refer to a little bit for some of the feedback that was generated. I also attended the uh, the meeting where we didn't have the I thought it was in early March, but February must have been <clears throat> where we didn't have the quorum of the Parks Commission, and I sat through the feedback given um, to our consultant from the community. And some of the important things that they mentioned were the the skating, the stage. I heard that over and over. I heard uh, the walking trail was very important to them. I also heard splash pad, um, an area to cool down because we don't have, you know, the ability to have community pools. And I also heard that, by the way, I have some of the, the feedback from the draft parks master plan. And uh, one of the um, things that people liked the most about our parks were uh, the maintenance and the cleanliness of the parks, the uh, uh, splash pad. Uh, areas for kids to play and new playgrounds and et cetera. So those four things, I, I really think we ought to take this and if we have the opportunity to, to leverage the uh, $651,000 grant, uh, I think we should do everything we can possibly do with the uh, impact fees available. That's why we pay into, that's why our community pays into these impact fees is to have beautiful facilities and parks and quality of life. So that, that's, those are my uh, feelings and my opinions. If we have the money, let's do it. I will tell you that this splash pad is uh, specked out at three times the size of the one up at Valley View. Great. So it can handle a lot more people. Okay. Vice Pinnacles. Mayor Luna. Well, looking at, <clears throat> at the plan and you're checking off the different <laughs> plans there, I'd, I'd like to see every one of them checked off because I really feel that there is a real need for a park such as this in our community, in our city, especially in the area where you just described. That area has never, ever had a decent area or a park. And, and this would be the first, this would be very appropriate. And I think back of the time that we did have the earthquake in 89, and Senator Escu became the city's headquarters for emergencies you know and I just feel like if we had a park like this and and we had God forbid another emergency then you know what this is a place where people could really gather uh, I like the picnic area I really do I know so many people that live in the area there and there is a card club mm. of elders that meet in a garage to play cards you know and I mentioned to them the, maybe the future of a park there. And they said, well, all we want is benches. We want a table and benches. We just want to sit there together so they can get out of that garage. Well, you, you know? get tables and benches with the basic park. Right. And, and my, just looking at it, uh, this is the dream park as far as I'm concerned. You know, and we do have quite a bit of little parks. But when you, you talk to people about the water park, the whale park, they always say, oh, well, it's up there. And some people don't feel like they can go up there and share that park. Well, this would be an excellent idea to bring people together as well, you know, because there'll be two parks, two water parks. So I would say click every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Clower. Yeah, just a couple questions here. The, the common park commons area is going to be flat, right? Yes. Okay, because we've in the past we've done grass, but for some reason we make hills and then you can't play on them. So this that's be, why they did the hills. This will be this will be good to actually <laughs> make it so that you can play on them or hang out or do whatever you want to do. Um, if we're going to remove the rubber for eighty-three grand, but we're going to put a swing set, what are the when you jump off the swings? What are you going to land on? There'll be rubber tiles like we have up at Park Hill. Um, it'll no longer be the shredded rubber. Okay, so that's how it already is at Park Hill, too, with yes. the tiles? Okay. Well, uh, Park Hill is half tiles, half shredded rubber. Okay. The tiles you see up at Park Hill were $40,000. So is the area that's gonna, that would have the swing set, is it going to be tiles or is it going to be? Uh, everything would be tiles underneath the climbing wall, the swing set, and the current playground. If you click it all and you spend the $2.4 million, Everything gets changed changed out to tiles. Okay, and safety wise, we're all good with the swing we're set. We're all good. Okay, just seems like a little. I hurt my ankles jumping off the swing off the swing set when I was little, so I, I've got a I've got a memory about that. Um, you hit your head too. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 
done that multiple times. <laughs> um, another couple questions. Um, we have a park horse that's going to be going in on the Allendale property, uh, like maybe a quarter mile away. Um, so it, if we want to do this as an extension of that, that might be cool. But if it's something where we're like, hey, we already have this pretty close nearby, uh, it might be an idea to My goal was grand. to actually interact Allendale, Park Hill, and the site mm -hmm. so that there could actually be a, a major course mm -hmm. that someone could do if they want to or they can handle this course. Uh, this one's going to be aimed a little more to the older crowd, so it's not going to be as intense. Um, so so will we be able to do parkour exercises on this that we're not doing at the other one? Because there's like 12 or 13 stations at the other one. I, I haven't seen the details on the station, but when we do review those details, we can change. Okay. okay. I think that's it. Those are expensive toilets. <laughs> I was surprised when I looked at numbers on those um, bathrooms, they were much less. I mean, what, what's... That particular so bathroom, if you look at the picture, it has another room, the, the exact same size as the bathroom for all the controls for the uh, filters for the water feature. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a kind of like a pump room too? Yes. I, I, I really like this. I think the what's the, is it a hard surface around? So it's not a. Yeah, it would be a concrete. It would be a concrete right, surface. He would be using um, the stabilized machine to hit the picnic areas as it's often it up until everything is our natural feel. But um, in the most of its cases, the primary pathway would be concrete. Why? Why would we do that? What's your thinking behind that one? There's a few reasons. One of them is long term maintenance. A lot of times when you have a stabilized DG, even more, even, and then we were looking at this uh, even more stabilized product, product called Staylock, um, you just don't get that thickness of a section, so it doesn't handle a lot of the weight, and a lot of times you'll have to come back and kind of retool it and re-stabilize it. How, how wide would that area be? So the, um, the primary pathway around the park commons is a seven foot wide path, um, and then the there was a few areas, like if you're coming in through the um, play area, and then if you're coming off the corner of um, Chaparral and McCarthy, those are 12 feet wide. But everything, kind of, we try to narrow things down to seven feet. And that's what gives, allows us to give um, the park maintenance vehicles an adequate pathway if they need to you know, pick up trash or do any sort of maintenance along the park. Which is gonna bring the next question I have. Are we placing bollards around the perimeter to keep vehicles from getting up there? That would probably, yeah, we would definitely need to put some lay down bollards. I would lean more towards split rail fencing and bollards and on the pathways. Around the perimeter, I mean, that, that yeah. one of the issues they had at that park when we first started looking at this was this constant abuse of people driving their cars out there and doing donuts on the, the grass area and destroying it and then it vent it got to the point where everybody was giving up on it. So it really does need to be protected we do have that way. In that okay, good. The escape feature of the stage, does that go back a little further from that sidewalk? It or does. It steps back. In the front, where, around the walking path there. In the front. I think uh, Vice Mayor Luna said it really best. This is a, that park, that new park that we've been looking for for quite a while. And there's a lot of seniors in that area. Um, I think that park course is just absolutely perfect. The new rubber mats, yes, let's get rid of that. 
cannot stand that stuff anymore, um, nor the smell of that. Well, it's the same material. It's just I know, but it just does not smell the same way. It doesn't get you all dirty, and it's just <laughs> you don't get varmints in it. Either. Yeah, um, it's beautiful. I, <laughs> it really is. I, I are you looking for terribly expensive? But let me. I'm, I'm sorry. This is the price. Total price. So total really, price. our portion of it is six hundred thousand less. That is correct. Okay. Good job. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Maybe are you, more comment? Are yeah. we going to provide Council Mayor Friend? Direction or a motion or what? Yeah, we'll just we'll go through the um, okay. everyone. Um, just one more quick That's comment. Familiar. At the um, at the meeting where we had, I, I, I apologize, I don't have the date where there was no quorum up here, and we had the community meeting to design the park. I asked the group. I said, "What would you guys think about cameras? How would you feel about cameras protecting the park?" And you guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't hear any negative thoughts to that, other than that only the police department would have access to that. It wouldn't just be random people would be able to click on and view the park. It's just something I think we should consider when we have the amount of investment that we have with all of our parks, not just this park. This just happens to be the park that I've been here that we've been uh, working on. I think we should have something tied in with a, a camera feature so that we can um, try to help detour. And then if something does happen out there, we can apprehend the people that are out there doing it. I just wanted to mention that I did bring that up at the meeting, and it seemed to be a positive reception to that. So I will include in the, ask them to include in the construction drawings conduit for that uh, feature. But until we figure out a way to get the fiber optics off of Park Hill down to the site, um, we can't yeah, it have to be wireless, put in the I'm cameras. Sure. It definitely has to be wireless. Okay, thanks. So as going back to Council Member Friend's um, comment, what, what is the consensus? Is it the full-blown package? Council Member Friend, this is your district. This is your baby. You've been on this one for a while. Let's spend the money. Let's do it all. <laughs> So I do have a couple of speaker cards, Mr. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. So let's hear um, comments. For resolution number 2018-83, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Hollister approving the concept plan for the McCarthy Park design and appropriating 247000 $333 for the construction of phase one. I have two speakers. The first one, Zavon Quesada. Good evening, my community of champions. My name is Zavon, and I'm also a champion and an artist and a driver and a, a park. I've been going to the meetings here since January, the first of the year. I haven't heard about anything except right now. Well, there was a, co a discussion about taking public designs areas and stuff like that. And then uh, to see the park and then to see the, I was just wondering in the restrooms, are we gonna have tenants washing our hands for us and drying them? Cause 324,000 for bathrooms, it's pretty cool. And, and the swing set, uh, is it gonna be made out of gold? Cause 84,000 is kind of, I mean, don't get me wrong. The park is awesome. But I mean, I just also wanna know like, uh, I know you did a lot out there to promote and campaign, like to everybody get to the community meeting to go discuss the, the park, you know? Honestly, though, like I've been at the city council meeting and I never heard about it and, or anything like that. And I, I mean, I got some ideas too. And I know there's $2 million is a lot for a park. I mean, especially no disrespect ever, ever like that. But I'm also an artist too. The concept is, I mean, there's no tennis courts. There's no baseball. There's no basketball courts. There's no like things that are, and then you have the handball court on the other side of the wall, climbing wall. That's not gonna really, I mean, you have one person playing handball on the other side, they're climbing rocks. I mean, I'm not disrespect, I'm just trying to get the whole concept of the idea to vision it. And I'm kind of like wondering, two million dollars? I mean, there should be like, we should have a whole parade of pictures of what's gonna happen, honestly, just taking it from one artist to another and critiquing something, because uh, I wanted to be part of this design thing, because. I'm also an artist and I got some park ideas and um, yeah, the, the communicating with each other and interactive, I mean, we should take a look at Oakland, which I say all the time, they're not spending half as much as that and their parks are in areas where they need, look at everyone's all mad at me, they're looking at uh, uh, projects too, like no, we're in the, and they're doing absolutely amazing. Where's the interaction of people interacting? We're going for walks, cool. We got a big designated area, a stage, of course we need a stage, because the skate park has been not looked at for a very long time. So skaters, of course they want to have something for a stage to go off of. They need something else because the skate park has been neglected for a very long time. 
So, I mean, why wouldn't they want that? I'm not trying to ever disrespect anything either. Don't, don't take it wrong. But I don't even know the, uh, where the park's going to be at. It says McCarthy Street. Like, we didn't get one kind of, like, layout. Like, okay, this is the street where it's going to be at. These are, the these are places that are around it. The whole idea just seems like it's just thrown there. Yeah, just spend the money. Just spend it. Yeah. But let's see where it's going, though. I mean, honestly, even you said, Mayor, the restroom, 324000 I'm actually going to hope, like, you know, get my hands dried after. Like, oh, thank you so much. But, I mean, it doesn't make, really... I'm not trying to put anybody down, but $2 million for a park. Okay, let's do this. Let's see the outcome of it. And maybe we can use some of the leftover money to help the skate park or other uh, parks that are being neglected. Really, they are. And, you know, it would be a really cool staple to be here for the Bacardi Park to see it grand opening and all that and to see all the interaction. But it would also be good to see the skate park that's being neglected in full bloom as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Just a, a clarification, there is a basketball court there. Oh, yeah. And, Marty um, Richmond. Welcome to the world of cost and government. <laughs> <laughs> Anything and everything. And I can tell you right now, that any park in Oakland, I'll guarantee you it's, it's more than that. Way more than that. Uh, Vice Mayor Luna is saying it's $8 million. Yes. I have, I have a concept also. I've been to at least six meetings where the people that live in that neighborhood had direct input to these people. Yeah. But with, with the park here. But Me too. Hang on, Mr. Casada. I know we, we don't want to have a conversation back and forth. Thank you. I'm fine. Wait, I'll wait. No, it's okay, Mr. Richmond. You're at the distance. Thank you very much, Marty Richmond. It's good we can uh, get to the point where we're in agreement. I would like to see a first class park. I I think um, I think um, we should start putting in first class things. I think it's very important. Uh, because we're a first-class community, and we should we should do that. Uh, the, the only real concern I have is to talk about. I just don't know what this is going to add to the maintenance budget. Number one. Uh, so we got to make sure we have that covered. I'm not. It's not time for me to go over that here. The other item is I would agree if we had the uh, either wireless or we had it wired. And I don't know whose budget it should be in. Maybe it should be in the police department's budget. I would like to see cameras to some extent because vandalism, which I is, is a crime I just cannot understand, okay? I understand some crimes, even some terrible crimes, because people lose their head. But when it comes to vandalism, people taking nice stuff and just making a mess out of it, I, I, it's a concept that just doesn't make any dent in me. I don't get it. Uh, is, a, is, a, is an ongoing problem because there are some people who just can't stand to see anything nice. I don't know what the deal is there. So I think we ought to either get it in the budget for the police department. If that's not possible, and maybe even if it is possible, we ought to think about um, when I went over some some um, uh, uh, some CalPERS information for some other counties, I see they're hiring things like lifeguards. They hire them for a few bucks an hour when they have. Uh, we ought to think about park monitors people who actually go out there and work. Chance for some young people to make a couple of bucks an hour uh, on part-time and um, uh, make sure the, the park, you know, people don't do bad things out there and uh, uh, clean up a little bit if necessary, uh, pick up uh, trash. Because, you know, even though we'll clean it up, uh, it will trash does get flying around sometimes and, and so they keep it nice. So we have to think about that as kind of a whole program to take care of the park, not just to build the park, but to run the park and to take care of the park and, and, and so that it's useful to the community. And I hope uh, people enjoy it well. If you go on, uh, you go on the state, state site for Parks and Recreation, I think it's called the SCORE or something like that. I'm not sure I got it right. Uh, they'll tell you, uh, based on the acreage of the park, how many people basically you can cover. And I think a one acre park is like 3,000 within a half mile. I consider that's just walking. That's not even taking one car. So this will, this, a park like this has a lot of different interests and, and a lot of different people will be interested. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have no more speakers, Mr. Mayor. One, one other item to mention, uh, Proposition 68, which will be voted on shortly, is a parks, uh, California parks uh, funding source. Um, the city will receive $200,000 automatically if that passes, 
and then there will once again be park grants in California that we'll be able to compete for. And it is my intention to submit this um, to compete for additional funds. Great. I think it's a, it's important to understand that even this is really, even though it's an existing park, this is really one of our newest parks. This would be a new park. And it's been unfortunately left in disrepair for too many years. And I, I do like the designs and good work, Councilmember Friend, for uh, staying with us. <coughs> So, Mr. Friend, I'll let uh, you make I'd it. like to make a motion that we adopt oh. resolution 2018 83. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'll be bringing the uh, plans back to you in August for approval to go out to bid, and uh, we'll get this done. Did, Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Did we need to? Say yeah, something else about the different appropriation. Two thirty-four. Do that when I bring it back. Yeah, okay. this is just for the two forty-seven to get started. Okay. Thanks. Because it'll be a different fiscal year. Right. We're gonna move to item F five. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and Councilman. I'm here tonight to um, review and um, help address, and I would seek authorization to allow the City Manager and his uh, designee to sign a subordination agreement between the City of Hollister um, and the homeowner for property 177 Line Street. Um, so in 2009, the current homeowner of 177 Line Street received a $50,000 loan through the Hollister Second Down Payment Assistance Program uh, through the City of Hollister Redevelopment Agency. Um, the loan is for 45 years at 5% annual interest. And at this time, the uh, current property owner is seeking to refinance the current home loan and request uh, cash out from the loan to complete home repairs to maintain uh, the integrity and safety of their home. Um, on March 14th, and I apologize, I didn't know the scanning was going to only scan black and white. Um, so these are the pictures that were technically part of the agenda packet. Um, so I apologize for that. I will note that next time so that when pictures are going through, um, you're able to see them. Um, so on March 14th, um, our four leaf contracted building inspector reviewed the home to determine the need for the pr proposed repairs. Um, here are the exhibits of the inspector's report and photographs. Um, the inspector states there are multiple layers of filling composition roof and sections where the first layer is blown off. Um, you can kind of see that in that first picture. Um, inside the attic area, which I will show in a moment, the inspector determined there's um, some damage and there's particularly more damage in the front of the home as well. There are sections, um, so this is above the garage area um, where there's, the, on the other side of the roof is also failing. On this section, which will also be addressed um, with part of maintaining the, the safety and integrity of the home, is there is um, drainage issues near the rear of the home. Um, so there is a slight slope that's going towards the home and also causing um, water to be leaking into the basement area. Um, so here is the second picture of the backyard area um, where you can s sort of see the sloping, but you can also see the water puddles where um, the water is not moving. And then here's um, pictures of the basement area um, where there's currently um, water sitting in the basement area. And then this is the point when I was uh, referring to where the garage and attic were also reviewed and there may be portions of it that will um, also need to be repaired. Um, in order to complete the refinance, um, the City of Hollister must agree to the terms of the new loan and sign a subordination agreement with the new loan company. Um, at the time of the purchase in 2009, um, the state uh, guidelines stated that a homeowner could not take cash out from their home loan um, in, um, for any debt consolidation, any cash out. Um, the only way that they could take a subordination was to reduce the rate. Um, in 2011, uh, the redevelopment agency in the city of Hollister um, did approve and update a subordination policy. Um, part of that policy um, 
had different and new updated guidelines. So um, the current resale restriction covenant and option to purchase agreement states an owner cannot take cash out from the refinance. So as in the agenda, I did include um, her current or the homeowner's current resale. Um, we are requesting a waiver by the city of Hollister to prove an exception to the prohibition or prohibition of no cash out to allow the home, homeowner to receive cash out and complete home repairs to maintain the integrity and safety of the home. Um, with the new guideline, the homeowner is currently meeting all those points one through four, and the homeowner will be required to provide a detailed cost estimate for safety repairs to be used as a basis of the approved subordination um, with the cash out. This waiver would allow, again, the city manager or the signee to grant a loan subordination if it meets an exception to preserve the safety and affordability of the home. Um, so at this time, we're requesting that you uh, approve the resolution and um, uh, move forward so that we can be able to review uh, the loan documents as well and then ultimately grant a loan subordination for the homeowner. Are there any questions at this time? Uh, Councilmember Frank? <clears throat> when I understand this is a new owner, um, she has been the owner since 2009, so she is still the same owner that received the original $50,000 loan from um, the redevelopment agency. So it's not necessarily a new owner, but the current homeowner is seeking to maintain the integrity of her home um, by completing a loan subordination and taking part of that monetary loan out to redo those portions of the uh, uh, redo portions of the roof and the drainage areas of her home. She wasn't given $50,000 in the first loan? Um, that was just for the down payment assistance to purchase the so home. now she's asking for a separate loan. It's not necessarily a separate loan. It's The loan will be refinancing her current home loan. And with that refinance, there is an option to take cash out. And we are seeking to allow that exception and waive that exception so that she can maintain the, the integrity of her home. Do you? Yeah, no. She's not. They're not asking for an additional loan from the city of Hollister. They're just taking. Um, she's just taking our loan and putting more debt in front of it. Um, so she's still going to have a first mortgage. Consider uh, almost like a. Let's pretend like she's just getting the hillock to make a home equity line of credit to make home improvements. She's not asking for us to do anything other than acknowledge that there's going to be a, a little bit more debt in front of us um, on title. We take second place. We yeah. go behind. Yeah. Yeah. But that makes the improvements would make the house worth more money. Anyhow. Correct. Yes. I mean, that's uh, part of it is the way I look at it is that any investment in the house is not only, I mean, understand that the loan to value is going up to 61%, but improvements to the house should help protect us a little bit. Okay. Council Member Clower. So the loan to value on the new first would be 61%. At 60, actually. Oh, sorry. Okay, 60. So mm -hmm. then when you factor in our 50 on the second, what's the loan to value total? So um, right now, about what the homeowner would have to pay the city based on the interest since um, the down payment is about 70000 Okay, so but if, you, if we take the 60% loan mm -hmm. to value on the new first and then we add in our 50, 50 of probably 400, what's about 12, so maybe... I th I we're, in, we're in the 75 percent range. No, I thought out. actually it was total. No, it, it's total. The, the 60 61 is total with ours. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's how Great. we calculate um, to make sure that you know there's enough equity in the home that if anything were to happen, we're protecting the city's money. So if you know for any reason something were to happen, there's enough equity in the home that technically the about 70 thousand that is owed at this time could be paid for based on the amount of the value of the home at this time versus when the home was first purchased. Okay. And kind of a separate question, are we doing these currently still? Meaning the $50,000 down payment assistance? Any, any down payment assistance? Uh, yes, um, but it's based on different qualifications, but it's also based on a percentage. So you can potentially receive up to 25% of the home value, uh, that would be the loan. But that's so a different program? It is. So th okay. at this time, this was part of the um, redevelopment agency, um, which is now technically not an agency any longer. So we still have a first-time home buyer program, um, but it's under different rules, different guidelines. Um, so, so. so when people who have the city second sell their house, are those funds going back to pay off RDA debt? Yes, okay. you are Thank correct. You. 
Okay, Councilor Aguilar. All right, that, that was actually my question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It was the LTV of the, of the loan to make sure the city is subordinate and protected, and it sounds like we are. Thank you. Yeah. The question I have is why not just take us out of the equation? If they're paying us 5%, they can get a new loan at a lower rate. That was um, brought to the homeowner's attention, um, and she can definitely, um, she is here tonight if you have questions for her, but um, so I don't necessarily speak for her, if okay. that's okay. <laughs> but we did have um, this conversation uh, on a few different occasions. <laughs> Hi there, Emily Manthe, 177 Line Street, Hollister. Any questions? Yep. So wouldn't it be better for you financially to take us out of the equation since you're paying 5% on our loan, the RDA loan? Right. You can get a lower rate. Um, oh, well, doing the calculations, it ends up being if I pay you guys back more, then I'm taking more money than I need initially just with the 50000 i I'm just doing 50000 to do home repair to stay in the home and keep the integrity. I still, you know, appreciate the city's help that, you know, got me into the home in the first place. I'm requesting funds from my first home lender to make repairs and keep Hollister kind of in the position that you guys are currently in. No, I, I agree. Right. What I'm saying is if you can get your new loan at a lower rate, which you probably can. Right. Yeah, I've already been approved in everything. Rather than 5%, you can pay a lower rate and not have right. these issues. Wouldn't but, that be more beneficial for you? Mr. Mayor, remember that um, her loan is silent. So even though she's paying 5%, she's not actually making she's a payment, payment to the city. It. So right. it's deferred. But it's still... It's a it's a accruing, accruing and, interest. and assuming that she fulfills her obligation of the loan, it, the the loan actually ends up being forgiven at some point in way off into the future, right? Forty-five right. years. Yeah, yeah. So I've got a ways. You to got go. a long okay. way to go. So. Right. So this, all these dollars are going towards the improvement. Correct. Okay. So we're documenting all that. Yes. Uh, on that note, part of the request is that she will need to provide a detailed description of the work and all the cost estimates um, as part of the agreement in order for her to um, receive the loan subordination for the city manager or the dis uh, the signee to sign off. Okay. Yeah, you are correct. All right, any other questions? Uh, Vice Mayor Luna. I just have a question um, regarding actually the person that's going to be doing the repairs. Does the city look at any of that document or is it all up to her to decide? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well. It is up to the homeowner to decide ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, in this instance, we are seeking um, the estimates and re potentially seeking receipts and estimates as well, so we can confirm that that money actually went um, to the repairs. Um, but you know, if there were suggestions or individuals, but ultimately it is the homeowner's choice on who they wish to do the repairs with. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any speakers? Yes, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Resolution number 2018-84, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Hollister, authorizing a waiver to approve execution of loan subordination for the property located at 177 Line Street. I have one speaker, and that's Emily Manthe. Oh, sorry. You <laughs> spoke. <laughs> Marty Richmond. I'm sorry. Thank you, Emily. Is there enough money in this to get, um, get the um, insulation and uh, uh, energy efficiency up to where it needs to be? Um, I, I asked the young lady who uh, uh, spoke, and she said it was built in 1945. So it's probably not uh, meeting the current specs unless it's been really upgraded and any kind of a invasion of water like that is going to just kill all that so i just want to make sure that we make you know the investment we want to keep it like that and we want it to be efficient otherwise you, you wind up paying a fortune in you know pg e bills i just want to know if 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 that was included in the in the bit not just to fix the roof but to, to you know put in some insulation in the attic or whatever so that we it meets some of the newer standards for insulation, because you can get a loan deal on that. If I, if I remember correctly, I, I kind of get lost. 
they start it and they stop it. And I, I, you probably know better than I do, and you do too. Thank you. That was my only question. Thank you. There are no more speakers, Mr. Mayor. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there a, a motion? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. You're good to go. F6. <laughs> F6. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I'm going to do this report for you this evening. Um, the, uh, the item before you is a contract with Titanium Racing in the amount of $7,000 to put on a color run. The color run will be held July, or is proposed to be held on July 28th. Um, we've now moved the location to Brigantino Park. Um, we've, we've, we've batted around a couple of different uh, courses, but I think the best thing to do on this particular event was uh, uh, have it over there at, at, at Brigantino Park. So it was, if there's not any other question, um, staff recommends that we approve or the council approves uh, resolution number 2018-85 uh, authorizing a, a, a contract with Titanium Racing for a 5K in the amount of $7,000. Okay, any questions from council? Councilmember Clark? How many people do we expect to participate? <laughs> One million. <laughs> no, um, usually our, our, our runs um, end up being right around 300. And do we know how much we're going to be charging? I do not. I wish I did. I do not have that information. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Any uh, comment cards? Okay. Can you help Mike finish that trail around that? We're working on it right now. Yeah. That's why we're kind of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Is there uh, there was no speaker card. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Tina, thanks you. <laughs> Move to uh, item G1, reports from city council members regarding their committee. Councilmember Clark? I do not have any committee meetings. Councilmember Friend? I have no reports. Vice Mayor Luna? I have no meetings. Councilmember Gillio? Uh, Thursday. I'm just looking for the time so I don't misspeak here. We have a uh, special COG meeting to receive feedback regarding um, the survey that went out, I believe. Mr. Mayor, maybe you can help me out here. I apologize, I don't see the time. I believe it's our normal uh, meeting time of 3 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, and I, I would invite the community to come out and hear information about the traffic sales tax measure. You're, you covered it. We're gonna move on to item G2, informational reports from City Council. Council Member Flower. Uh, yeah, uh, last Thursday I attended the San Diego County Association of Realtors Candidates Forum and they had about 20 candidates for probably six or seven different races and it was pretty well attended and I was excited to see that many people out there and, and getting involved and there's, there's a good number of choices in a lot of the races so I think if, if you're planning on voting uh, start paying attention to everybody and what they're saying and then hopefully make the best decision. Okay. Council Member Frank? <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody that on Armed Forces Day, and I believe that's June 12th, Father's Day, Armed Forces Day, and that's when we're going to have the dedication of the memorial out at the airport, at the airport, and that's dedicated to Squadron 288, which was a instrumental group of uh, naval aviators that supported the Air, the Navy and the Marine Corps on the island of Iwo Jima, and I wish everybody would come out and celebrate that. Do you have a date on that, Council Member? Pardon? Do you have a the date, date on that? The date? I, it, oh, it's Father's Day, you said? I'm sorry, I missed it. I think it's Father's Day, but it's Armed Forces Day. Thank you. Uh, May 19th. May 19th, excuse me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Armed Forces Day. Uh, Vice Mayor Luna? Yes. Um, I attended the Wa Wells Water Conference in Sacramento on March 22nd and 23rd. Um, I also attended the Immigration Forum held at the Hollister Community Center on Saturday the 24th of March. Um, on Wednesday the 21st of March, I was invited 
uh, by the executive director, uh, his name is uh, Mickey Ibarra, uh, to attend the Latino Leaders Luncheon in San Jose, where they honored a good friend of mine, Maria Echeveste, who was on the Clinton administration. Uh, over 300 people attended. It was a very good event. Um, I was also glad to have um, accompanied my husband, who is a Vietnam veteran, to the Veterans Vietnam Dinner on Thursday, the 29th at the Veterans Memorial Building. Very well attended, a lot of food. <laughs> and um, we had planned for a City Hall informational session on Saturday, but being that it was Holy Week, uh, there was the attendance was very poor, but we would like to reschedule that because there was some interest. I did receive some phone calls of people actually very interested in a session such as this one. So hopefully we can move forward and plan the session again. Also, um, I meet with my representatives, so the commissioners that, that represent my district, and we had a very good meeting on March the 28th, Wednesday, at the Hollister Community Center with Pauline Valdivia and uh, the two commissioners from the airport and recreation. I, I want to thank Brian for being there and Mary. Uh, they brought in some very good information uh, for our commissioners, and uh, they, we plan to do this again on a constant basis so that everybody is informed. <clears throat> this morning, I had the honor of uh, attending the Cesar Chavez Family Vision Breakfast at the Fairmont in San Jose. Um, I don't know, I mean, it was held at 7.30, but it was a jam-packed event, so I was just glad to be there and also uh, to talk to former astronaut Jose uh, Hernandez, who has some fond memories of working when he was a child here in Hollister. And, you know, picking prunes, doing everything with his family, and who was to know that that young guy someday would go up to space. So he's got fond memories of Hollister, and so I invited him back. I invited him to come. So he said, yes, I will. So when you do have events in Hollister, let me know. He said, I'll appear with my NASA outfit, and he had his NASA outfit on. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, I just want to remind everybody that uh, senior citizens, there's a free tax preparation for them. So if you contact Pauline Valdivia, she can give you all the information. I think it's important. Uh, the deadline is coming up upon, upon everybody, and since it's a free, I'd like to remind everybody that maybe, you know, it would be good to in, in, inform others about the free service. Okay? So that, that's my report. Thank okay, you. Thank you. I also uh, had the opportunity to attend the uh, ceremony to honor our, our um, local Vietnam veterans. Very uh, moving, powerful ceremony. And um, I'm very thankful for our VFW Center for putting that on. We have an amazing VFW hall. They also put on an uh, Easter egg hunt on uh, Saturday that was very well attended. And, uh, of course, they donated all the uh, Easter eggs and Easter baskets for the kids. A lot of smiles and happy kids out there. Uh, I'd encourage people now that uh, spring is coming around, there are a lot of events in the city of Hollister, in the downtown, in the area, in the county. A lot of things are happening. All you have to do is kind of keep your ear to the ground and you'll see things that are out there and happening. I, I also attended the uh, Nibble and Network of the Hollister Downtown Association. That was on uh, Wednesday of last week. Um, we have a, uh, a job fair coming up hosted by the Chamber of Commerce. I think um, the CEO mentioned that April 12th, I believe it is. I'm right. Does that sound right? Thank you. I just wanted to put that out there again. And then uh, we were asked by man, many of the folks in the audience tonight to talk about the uh, motorcycle rally, so I will talk about that. Um, we um, addressed this at a prior meeting, and, and essentially the facts are this. The facts are that the promoter was unable to come up with $180,000 for the motorcycle rally. I also uh, met with the acting chief at the time, who was Carlos Reynoso, and I said, hey, chief, how... how are you guys at being able to pull together the staffing for this event to ensure that we have enough officers to maintain the safety of the event? And he told me we are past the deadline where I believe that we can actually get those people involved. And the reason he told me that was that a lot of the agencies are needed at their home agencies. Uh, you know, it's 4th of July week, and they also have an influx of people for their different events. 
And then he also said it's just harder actually to get people and officers to come to that event. And then the third factor uh, that I used to determine my vote was the, um, the issue of uh, the fact that we are suborned for workers' compensation for the lifetime of the injury for a public safety member. That's a, a, a very difficult one to, um, to overcome. So if, if there is a, a solution to those three uh, issues, I, I would be happy to, um, to take a look at this. And it sounds like you guys are going to meet on Wednesday to talk about money and public safety and all those different things. So hopefully we can hear a report back on that. Thank you. Okay. I have no report. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, I will be here on Wednesday night, um, 6 o'clock to whenever we finish. Hopefully it's not too late. Um, and then second is on June 11th, um, I'm going to ask uh, the council to have a special meeting, and that's just to conclude our Prop 218 uh, process. I apologize for that, but since we're dark in July, um, I want to, we're, it, that's the best available date for us to get the, it done as soon as possible, and, and we need to, um, we have that meeting. So I'm giving you plenty of notice, I think, June 11th. Thank you very much. Okay. City Attorney. Nothing to report, thank you. Chief, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess some things happened in the three months I was gone. Not much. So I hear, yeah. Um, again, thank you to the council and the city manager for, uh, actually to Billy, for nominating me for the National Academy. It was a great experience. I've already started doing some things that uh, I learned at the, uh, the academy, and we'll, we'll see some things in the coming year that will uh, be for some efficiency stuff. Um, just a reminder, uh, the 5K foot pursuit is May 12th. Uh, for those out there, it's, it's, it's really easy to register for. It's uh, just 5, number 5, K, footpursuit.com. Uh, it goes uh, to uh, assist our um, explorers in, in their, going to their academy to each year. Um, it'll be held at uh, Brigantino again. Um, hopefully this year it won't be almost four miles <laughs> like it was last year. <laughs> We're hoping for a 5K and it was a little longer than that. I was pretty doggone tired. Um, but it'll be a good day uh, for all, so I invite anybody to come out there to do that. I'll be talking about the National Academy and my experiences there on April 9th at Rotary. And uh, those in the community that want to go see that, come on down and, you know, and uh, enjoy that as well. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk. Just congratulations to Chief for, congratulations to the Chief for completing his FBI Academy. Thank you. Awesome job. Excellent. Let's move to item G3. Update on the Pinnacles Gateway Partnership. Good evening, Mayor Velasquez and Council members. The last meeting of the Pinnacle Gateway Partners was held on March 15th at Eden Wift Rhine Winery, which is the location of the former Pietra Santa Winery. I'd uh, just like to let anybody in the audience know that anyone can come to these meetings. It, there's not a fee. Anyone's welcome who wants to be a partner. It was well attended. A few of the highlights, uh, there was data shared from the, that the California Tourism Conference reported that tourism is down 5% nationwide, but up 5% in the state of California. There was an update, as always, at these meetings from the superintendent, Karen Bepler Dorn. She reported that Pinnacles National Park was no longer the newest park in the nation. The, the 60th park that was added is Gateway Arches, but we're still number 59, and, and some people make it a bucket list to, to go to all the parks, so we're, we're still there. Um, there. There was also an article shared from the San Jose Mercury where there's uh, nine national parks in the state of California, and according to Great Britain's Telegraph News, America's 20th best national parks, Pinnacles rank number four. So um, that's something to be proud of. Uh, the park staff said that they're observing more and more weekday out, out of state license plates in the parking lots. So that's kind of a shift in visitation also with more families visiting. And they've, I think I've reported before to you that they've said if you want to come, especially this time of year, get there between 10 and 2, because otherwise the parking lot slammed and the shuttles are crammed. And now they're saying from 9 to 3. 
And one of the things that the superintendent talked about was the challenges of traffic at both entries. It's very narrow coming in on the west side, the road, and on our side, there's just too many people coming. And so the, she's, uh, one of the things that we talked about with there's a steering committee that meets after the, the regular meeting is what will be on our next agenda. And our next agenda on May 17th, we'll have our meeting and this meeting will be at the Mission Samo Batita Teaching Center, and the topic will be transportation. We'll, there's an opportunity to pursue a sustainable communities transportation planning grant that could examine the feasibility of shuttle service and park and ride lots in the gateway communities. The gateway communities are excited about this because there's this is an opportunity for people to come and park in our downtowns. We can identify lo locations for them to park. And then if they shuttle into the park and they come back out, then they're near our restaurants. They're not gonna just be driving by. Uh, another benefit to this that has been identified in the discussion is, is that there's some children and youth that are families that are economically disadvantaged and maybe this is a way for them to get into the park for volunteer experience or just to have access to the park. So we're, we have contacted uh, Maura Tomi, who's the executive director of AMBAG. She'll be attending the meeting. We've contacted the local staff at, at the Council of Governments. We're, we believe they'll be attending. Uh, there's staff from Caltrans that will be coming and we're encouraging the representatives on COG to attend Monterey County is covering their side to invite local representatives from the gateway communities. So we're, uh, I think we're starting to realize some power in working together as a partnership to try and resolve some of these, these issues that we have. And I, I believe the superintendent is also gonna try and have somebody from the National Park Service. So th uh, the, there was a general presentation from Eden with Eden Rift Winery about the history of the winery. It's very rich. Uh, some of the grapes there were initially planted in 1892. So he talked about that. I think one of the exciting things about going to these gateway partner meetings, that we go to different locations and, and people come and they learn about what's, what a beautiful place we live in. The, one of the council people arrived a little late. She got lost. She came from the city of Greenfield and she just said the drive was gorgeous. <laughs> and so that, but I think we're finding out about our communities. I think I've said this before, but we're really realizing what richness we share. And one of the things the steering committee also talked about, there was a question, because we have this part-time coordinator, should we spend resources on a, on a newsletter to keep people informed? or on a map, and the preference was to, to prepare that map that shows some of the special places that are in our shared community. And I think one of the, the concepts is, because much of the gateway corridors are on Highway 101, so it's 101, 101 things to do in the area, and of course some of those will be in Hollister. So I, I think that's it. But again, the next meeting's May 17th at Mission Samuel Batista Teaching Center, and it's from 10 to 12, and anyone's welcome. Mary, um, you mentioned earlier that you may want a representative from COG. Is, is that something that you would like to have formal? That would be, yeah. I'll volunteer for that, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind. I watched <coughs> the last one, and I really enjoyed it. I'd, I'd be happy to support you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions from council? Any speaker cards? No? No Thank you for the update. Item G4, I, I ask this to be put on the agenda. I noticed that um, we seem to be having quite a few discussions on our consent agenda items, and I want to get feedback from all of you here at the council if maybe it'd be better to put the consent agenda towards the back so we can get done with the business first. I know a lot of people come out to um, discuss items on the agenda and they find themselves sitting here for an extra hour as we have 
people call out each item on the agenda on the consent. So I think it might help with the flow of our business if we move that consent agenda towards the back of the agenda. So I wanted to get all of your input and see if that would be something all of you would be in favor of. Councilmember Luna. Um, I am not in favor of it. And the reason being is because it deprives the public to come in and sometimes they just want to make a comment to the city council, but they want to come in early enough and leave. Um, unfortunate, you know, there's people that will pull every item on this agenda, not understanding the process. And I think we, every council, I think, in the state of California deals with that. But the fact is that I don't believe in depriving anybody from the public the opportunity to speak especially at the beginning of the meeting and then we move on um, I just can't see it uh, the public comment being at the very no, end no, of the, the agenda comment. oh no no I'm sorry the consent agenda only not public comment public comment I, I'm 100% oh, okay. so with I, you <laughs> I thought it was going to be the public comment <laughs> no no comment. absolutely not that should be up front no Consent agenda. The consent agenda. I I like it where it is. Consent I agenda only. Okay. But we don't. We do not want to deprive anybody of no, you the don't. ability to speak no, you here. Don't. We, and the consent agenda as well. I believe agenda. it should be where it is now. All right. uh, Councilmember Clara. I got a question for uh, City Attorney. I might be wrong, but it seemed like the first couple of years that I was on this, we didn't let anybody from the public pull items off consent it had to be somebody from the council that pulled it so your question is is whether or not uh, we the city council has a prerogative not to allow the the public from pulling a consent agenda item yeah I thought That's that we correct. I thought we were the ones who pulled the items and then somewhere along the way there was a change in policy that allowed anybody to pull any number of items they wanted which kind of defeats the purpose of it being called the consent agenda that that the pro that's where the problem really is and was is because it was no longer a consent agenda once that decision was made well i personally i can answer to that i think it's important that as we've mentioned earlier everyone has the ability to ask questions on any item on this agenda whether it be the consent or an item listed consent item doesn't mean we, the public can't ask questions about it it just means it's grouped together so we can move through quicker but if anybody in the public has a question about any item I feel it's very important that they can ask that question and have an answer to it and that that's fine but the point my point is that yes. it wasn't always like this no, we, we had conversations you're, you're about right. it that changed the way right. that the meetings ran and we used to have meetings that were two hours long, and now our average is more like four hours, three and a half hours, four hours. So that's not going to change by moving anything around. And the one, the one reason why I'm, I'm against moving it is because sometimes we have 22 items on consent, and that, there might be eight staff members that have to stay here to find out if their item gets pulled, and they might be staying until 11 o'clock at night and then not have any items actually get pulled. So... I'd, I'd prefer that we leave it the way it is. So if, if I'm a staff member and my item doesn't get pulled, I know it 6.45 and I'm, I'm going home. Um, and if we do the public hearings first, there's no way to tell how long they're going to take. Sometimes I, like, I thought we'd be out of here by 8 and we're not. So if we're, if we're going to consent now, there's just no way to tell. So I, if this is the question, I, my answer is to leave it the way it okay. is and continue to suffer through it. Councilman Gilliam. I, I agree uh, with what uh, out of respect for uh, staff and um, also um, the, the only other question I had for you all was this if we're talking about the structure of the meetings and this is not regarding this specific idea but how about um, did you guys ever consider having closed session at the end of the meeting as opposed to at the beginning so that the meetings would always start you know when people think they're gonna start because occasionally we'll run 40 minutes late 30 minutes late and we have a crowd of people sitting here waiting for us so I don't know if you guys have ever thought about that or if there's pluses or minuses or what you think about that well, we have talked about that, that. Is we have to report out on yes. report out. same same issue yeah we just come other, out we other way around you have to report out at midnight 
Yeah. What they're actually just report out there. Yeah. Okay, so the, I, I hear there's not a consensus to change anything. It stays the way it is. I personally don't see any reason to change it. Okay. If, gonna allow if, I, if I may, just one suggestion I think you may want to consider is right now what you're not doing is you're not allowing the public to comment on any of the consent agenda items before they're actually called. Okay, so that's partially probably the reason why you allow the public to pull them so that they can, so that a particular member can, can comment on them. So, for instance, assuming that none of you pulled any of the items on the consent agenda, and let's assume you had 10 items on the consent, consent agenda, then at that point in time, the public would have the opportunity to, to comment on that item, on those 10 items, but which one, right? Because you, you guys wouldn't have pulled any of them. And so that's where I think the issue comes in of the public actually pulling the item so that they can comment on a particular li item. That's the only rationale I see for you following that, that course, which is not necessary. Some uh, jurisdictions do not allow the public to pull uh, items, and, but they're allowed to comment on them. But they're, they're going to have to pick and choose. They're going to have to read all 10 items and then figure, figure out when they get up to the stand on which one they're going to be commenting on before you actually vote. So that's the, the issue. So we would have close or open session before? I think that's what's been happening. They're, they're submitting their comment cards. And again, I want to make sure we're always allowing anyone to speak on any item on this agenda. It's very important to me. I never want to close off anyone. So if the consensus is to leave it the way it is, we, we do have a resolution uh, currently in place that sets policy that a member of the public can currently pull an yeah. item off of consent. That can. is the policy yes. then. But it's only a couple years old. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. And it may have been before. Okay, H, I, J, and K, there's no business. Is there Move a motion to adjourn? Second. A motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries.